Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So in this tutorial, we're going to continue with our C++ series. So in the last tutorial, we looked at our functions in C++. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at our parameters and arguments in C++. So if you are new to my channel, you might have noticed the new intro that we have. So this was made for my friend. So uh, if you want to follow him on Instagram, it's really good at editing and stuff like that. So uh, I'll drop a link in the description below in case you want to follow up with him and see what he does. So let's get started with our today's uh, tutorial. So in today's tutorial, we're going to look at passing uh, parameters and arguments to functions. So what's a parameter? So whenever you have a function, one of the things that you want to do is that you want the function to be able to work with different inputs, right? So now these different inputs are known as uh, arguments, okay? You pass arguments to those specific functions and then you get an output or you do something that uh, specific input so before you are able to do that before you can be able to pass an argument to a function you need to tell the function that it it should expect a certain uh, argument of this data type okay that's what a parameter is so where you are, you are declaring and defining a function you need to tell the function that it needs to ask it needs to accept a certain data type and you can give it a name or you cannot give it a name but whenever we are, de we are declare, defining that function, you must keep a name. But whenever we are, de uh, sorry, whenever we are defining the, uh, declaring the function rather, you can just provide the data type, right? And whenever we are declaring the, defining the function, you have to provide also uh, the, uh, the variable name, okay? So these are known as parameters. So let me just show you just in a second uh, what a parameter is. So a parameter is used to identify values passed into a function. So what this basically means is that this is how we call a function, right? So in the previous tutorials, uh, let me just scroll up. Uh, we used to call functions this way, right? We we used to call functions like this. Now when you need to pass in a certain value right now because we have we have used up here. You have used a, a parameter. So now you need to pass in that specific uh, par, uh, argument to the function. Now to do that, you just need to uh, pass in that specific uh, argument uh, argument name. Okay, this argument will be a variable like in this case, or this could just be another data. For example, you can pass in 10, 10 in here directly, just like this. It should also work. Okay. So now that you have looked at the uh, uh, parameters, now what are arguments? So arguments are what are the values that we pass in whenever we are calling a function. So we are calling our function and you are passing it a variable called a name. That's now the argument. Whenever we pass in even 10 direct value, that is also an argument. Okay. So the arguments are the values that are passed whenever we are calling a function. Well, parameters are the value, are the identifying the data types that are used um, when defining or declaring, defining and declaring a function, or just uh, defining and declaring a function in one body. Okay, that's what uh, an argument is. Uh, sorry, a parameter is. So an argument in, uh, are the values that are passed to the function, as I said. While the parameters are the, uh, are the types and the identifiers uh, that that is used to identify values that have been passed. To the function so it's used to identify the arguments that have been passed to a function okay so i hope it made sense so a parameter refers to the the, 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 uh, the type in the identifier and an argument are the values that are passed into the function as uh, we have just iterated over that so now let's look at the simple snip, uh, code snippet to understand this more so i created a function called add to it takes in a parameter the parameter is uh, has a data type of int and has a uh, identifier name of b so this two just takes in a number and then adds two to that number and then prints it out on the screen. So in our int main function, I have created another variable called a and I have assigned to it the value of 10. Okay, so now I'm calling the function and passing it, I'm passing in a. What happens is that by default in the computer's memory, a is zero, right? I mean, sorry, b is zero because whenever I define an integer by default is zero. So whenever you pass in a, what will happen is that the value of a, which is 10, will be copied into the place, the memory place where b is stored. So 10 will be copied in here. So now we have 10 as b as being 10. So we simply add 10 plus 2, which is 12, and we're simply going to output that 12, okay? So that's what a, a parameter is useful. So the, uh, the arguments that have been passed will be copied into the variable, the, the parameter variables, okay? So now uh, let's go ahead and actually see this in Atom. It will make more sense. So I've simply included the basic as uh, C++ syntax. So let's go ahead and actually create a function, call it add. So I'm going to take in B and I'm simply going to uh, C out uh, B plus 2. That's what you're going to do. And then down here, you're just going to define a variable called int A. And you're going to create a value of 10. So you're going to do a call this function and pass in A. 
So what uh, this is going to do is that a the value of a is 10. So 10 will be copied into b. So b will be 10. So 10 plus 2, which is basically 12. So that's what we should get back. So I'll save this code and then I'll compile and run my application again. And this time we should just get back uh 12 as being the answer because uh 10 plus 2 is 12. Well, I'll make this huge. And you can see here we have 12 right there. So that's how we can work with parameters in uh, parameters and arguments in C++. Okay. So you might also want to take into we can take in multiple uh, parameters. Sorry, arguments or pass in multiple parameters. So you can say B. You can call this a B, and then let's call this A. So we are simply going to add A and B. So we are going to add in here A. So we are simply going to come down here and create another variable called B, and we are simply going to input in here 10. Now. This variable names must not be the same as the parameter names. Okay, this uh, could be anything. Let me just change it to D, and this should be okay C. So I want to add C and D. So D comma C, just like this. So it will just uh, copy the value of D, which is ten. Let's make this twenty. So to copy the value of D, which is ten, and and put it store it in A. So A now is ten, and copy the value of C, which is twenty, and store it in B. Okay. So their position matters. So if this if this uh comes first then it will be stored in here and if this comes second then it will be stored in here okay the position matters so whenever you run this code again we should just get back 30 because the 10 plus 20 is just basically 30 so i'll bring my terminal this way and make this huge you can see we have back there 30 so that's how we can work with those parameters in c plus plus okay so now that you have done this let's go ahead and actually do a simple exercise to test our knowledge let's just create a function that will return if a number is a perfect square or not a perfect square so a perfect square is a number whose square root is an integer okay so we are going to return a bool which is whether it's a perfect or not perfect so per perfect and then you're going to say square just like this and this will take in an integer as a, any number and then return if the number is perfect or not perfect okay so i've just declared the function i'll copy it and i'll define it below here so what you're going to do is just going to return uh you're going to return some but just in a moment let me remove this so that i can explain to some then you're going to create something else double you're going to call it uh, num underscore data and you're simply going to say num data equals to the square root so sqrt of num okay so you're going to find the square root of num and then we're going to pass in the square root of num into here so we're going to say uh num we're going to say uh, return num underscore data minus the truncated value of uh, num uh, underscore data okay and then uh equals equals to zero okay so i'll put this in parentheses just like that so what you're simply going to do is that forever get an, a number for example let's say 25 25 is a perfect square before this because the square root of 25 is just simply of 5 right so we take 5 we need find the square root of 5 so my number data will be 5 and so it's a double so we're taking 5 minus a truncated value of 5 so 5 truncated is just basically 5 itself so this minus this will be 0 so this shows that it's a perfect square but in other case when you take 20 the square root of 20 is 4.4 .4 uh, four, some, four, seven, something. Okay, so whenever we, we, we put passing this into here, this would be four point seven something, and the truncated value of of this number would just be the four itself. The four would be the the decimal part to be removed. So it would be zero. Uh, sorry, it would be four minus four point something. So if the uh, four point four seven, so that will not be equal to zero. So that shows that twenty is not a perfect square, and this applies to all other numbers. Okay, so we are going to just uh, find the square root. And you find the truncated value of the square root. We minus the, 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 the truncated value from the original value of the square root. And then if it is 0, it equals to 0, then that value is a perfect square. Else is not a perfect square. That's all our program does. So we're going to call in here. Uh, we're going to call it double. So you're going to just say uh, if uh, passing perfect. So just copy this to save time. So I'll paste that in here. Paste that in here. And then I'll pass in maybe any value. So I can pass in here. Uh, we can pass in here 20, so right. So if it is a uh, uh, perfect square, we just have to print perfect, perfect, okay, perfect square. We can just say perfect square, uh, and then we can end that specific line. Else, we're going to do an else statement here, and you're going to print not a perfect square. So we're going to do else, else, we'll do a C out, and we just say. 
not perfect like this not perfect square just like that and then i will, uh, can also end that line here then i'll save the code and then we can go ahead and actually run it again so i'll go ahead and actually run my code again and uh if i didn't make any errors i got an error so sqrt was a uh, not declared this name scope okay so my error is that this sqrt uh, function uh, comes from the cmath library so you have to include that in there so you have to say include and then cmath so we include cmath right here so now we can go ahead and actually compile and run our code again so this now should work if i didn't make any error so we get a number here and we see that 20 is not a perfect square so make this huge you can see here 20 is not a perfect square so let's pass in 25 so 25 is a perfect square so I'll run this code again and uh, we should get back perfect square so i'll bring this one and then you can see we have this is a 25 being a perfect square and i can also include this this should also be a perfect square so i'll bring this one here and you can see the output is that it is a perfect square okay so that's how we can just uh, work with functions in c plus plus and now we can use functions to check uh, different uh, things in c plus plus so in the next coming tutorials we are going to work on a few examples just to see uh, different applications of uh, C, uh, of uh, parameters and arguments in C++. Okay, so in this case, this was uh, our parameter, while this was, uh, was the argument. So you can take this argument from user input or something like that. So uh, that's bring us the end of this tutorial. So if you find this so helpful, please kindly consider subscribing to this channel and giving this video a thumbs up. So thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial. Thank you.